So now that 24H2 has officially been released, it's time to find out if we get any free gaming performance by upgrading. Stay tuned. So last week I showed you how to install Windows 11 24H2 on unsupported hardware. During the testing for that video, I was kind of impressed with how much better 24H2 ran on the eWaste gaming PC than 23H2 did. Back when 23H2 came out, I even mentioned then that it was looking like it was getting close to considering upgrading if you were still on unsupported hardware. But to my surprise, 24H2 ran better. So now it's time to see how much better it actually runs. But this time, we're not doing it on unsupported hardware, but instead on an AM4 AMD and an AM5 AMD. But first, I gotta pay some bills. So check out today's sponsor. Is your copy of Windows 10 unactivated? Well, it doesn't have to be because with today's sponsor, VIP SCD key, you can get a valid Windows 10 license for under $20. Stop dealing with that stupid watermark on the desktop with a valid license for Windows 10. Also, with an activated copy of Windows 10, you can upgrade to Windows 11 for free. Just go to the link in the description below and pick up a valid Windows 10 license key. During checkout, use the code CYBERCPU for a 25% discount. Once you have your key, go to your activation settings in Windows 10 and click on the link that says Change Product Key. Enter the product key you just purchased and hit Activate. Now you don't have to deal with that stupid watermark that come with running an unactivated copy of Windows 10. Now, on with the video. So yes, today I'm actually gonna be doing this test on two different computers. Since my own personal gaming system here is still an AM4 Ryzen 5 5600 with an RTX 3060, it's gonna be included in this test. However, I also have the $800 gaming PC that we recently built. Well. Eventually that system is going to become my system, but I haven't had time to upgrade it yet. However, it's still set up with an AM5 Ryzen 5 7600 and an RTX 2080. The AM4 system has both water-cooled CPU and GPU, but the AM5 system is using a Corsair AIO on the CPU and it has the stock EVGA cooler on the 2080 GPU. Both systems also have 32 gigs of memory, but the AM4 system is using PC3200, while the AM5 system is running DDR5 PC6000. Now, I've heard that there are some pretty substantial performance improvements for AMD CPUs. However, I think those benefits are mostly going to benefit the AM5 CPUs. So that's what we're gonna be doing testing on both AM4 and AM5. This way we can compare the improvements with our older gaming system as well as our newer gaming system by upgrading to 24H2. Now, this test isn't going to be between the AM4 system and the AM5 system, but we will at least be able to see the difference between the two systems. But ultimately, that's not the purpose of this video. This video is to see if we get any improvement in performance by upgrading to Windows 11 24H2 and if that performance differs for AM4 or AM5 CPUs. So, let's jump into the benchmarks. The first game we're looking at today is Black Mesa. This is a remake of Half-Life 1 on the Half-Life 2 engine. This will help us to look at how older games will play on 24H2. On the AM4 running 23H2, we got an average FPS of 168.2. Now once switching over to 24H2, we got an average FPS of 173.2. This is a 2.9% increase in performance, but it doesn't stop there because 23H2, our 1% low was 110.1. And on 24H2, our 1% low was 115.6. This is a 4.9% improvement in frame timings. On AM5 running 23H2, we got an average frame rate of 222.7. When switching over to 24H2, we got an average FPS of 223.4. This is an increase of about 0.3%. Our frame timings didn't look much better, with a 1% low in 23H2 of 141.4 and in 24H2 of 140.3. Now, we saw a pretty mild improvement on AM4, but 
pretty much stuck with the margin of error on AM5. Personally, I think this is because the AM5 system, I think this is because on the AM5 system, I think we pretty much maxed out the Half-Life 2 engine in Black Mesa. So it's not that we didn't get more performance, but we essentially ran the game as hard as it could be ran. Now the next game we're looking at is Counter-Strike 2. This is a great example of an FPS game for our test. On AM4 and on 23H2, we got an average frame rate of 156.4. And in 24H2, we got an average frame rate of 154.3. So we actually lost 1.4%. However, once we look at the 1% lows, it's much better. In 23H2, we got a 1% low of 57.4. And on 24H2, we got a 1% low of 90. That's a 44.2% increase in our frame timings. On AM5 and in 23H2, we got an average frame rate of 138.6. And in 24H2, we got an average frame rate of 144.4. So in this case, we actually got an increase of 4.1% in our average frame rate. Then when we take a look at our 1% lows, it doesn't look so good. In 23H2, we got a 1% low of 99.3. And in 24H2, we got a 1% low of 83.2. That's a loss of 17.6%. So in this case, AM4 did pretty good, but on AM5, it was kind of a disappointment. The next game we're looking at is Cyberpunk, because if there's ever a game that can drag both of these systems down, it's gonna be Cyberpunk. This game was also tested with RTX enabled. On the AM4 with 23H2, we got an average frame rate of 35.1. And in 24H2, we got an average frame rate of 35.5. That's about a 1% improvement. And well, kind of within the margin of error. Our 1% low doesn't look any better with it off by less than 1%. On AM5, it was about the same with our average frame rate in 23H2 coming in at 42.1 and 42 with 24H2. And again, our 1% low was less than 1% different. So in regards to 24H2, we got virtually the same performance in Cyberpunk. The next game we're looking at is The Last of Us. This is a new game that I'm throwing into my benchmarks because it definitely strains the system and hopefully will show us some improvements. On the AM4 system with 23H2, we got an average FPS of 47.4. And in 24H2, we got an average FPS of 47.6. So less than 1% difference. However, we did see a little bit of improvement on our frame timings, with 24H2 getting 34.7 and 24H2 getting 35.7. This is almost a 3% improvement. It's not much, but I'll take it. On the AM5 system, it wasn't much different. In fact, I got 58 FPS exactly in both 23H2 and 24H2. In regards to frame timings, we got 44.2 in 23H2 and 44.9 in 24H2. So this is another game that got a little bit of improvement on AM4, but ran almost exactly the same on AM5. The next game we're looking at is Shadow of the Tomb Raider. This is an older game, but it still holds up, and it's a great game to test if you want to test older games that support DLSS and RTX, even though the RTX support is only for Shadows. On AM4 with 23H2, we got an average frame rate of 88.3, and on 24H2, we got an average frame rate of 88.6. Again, this is less than a 1% difference. However, we did get a pretty good improvement in our frame timings. In 23H2, we got a 1% low of 75.1, and in 24H2, we got a 1% low of 78.1, which is almost a 4% improvement. However, if we look at our 0.1% lows in 23H2, we got a 56.2, and in 24H2, we got a 76, giving us almost a 30% improvement. Now, this is the only time I've mentioned the 0.1% lows, but I had to bring it up because it was a pretty good improvement. On the AM5 with 23H2, we got an average frame rate of 105.9, and in 24H2, we got an average frame rate of 106.3. Again, this is less than a 1% improvement, and when we look at the 1% lows, it was 
less than 1% as well. However, just like before, our 0.1% lows were pretty impressive. With 20H2, we got a 76, and in 24H2, we got a 92.3, giving us a 19% improvement in our 0.1% lows. So, is gaming performance a good reason to upgrade to 24H2? That's a pretty resounding no. In fact, aside from a few outliers, 24H2 doesn't seem to have helped AM4 or 5. Now, I'm pretty sure that Microsoft has patched 23H2 to fix the AMD performance problem that came up a month or so ago. So prior to that patch, it probably would have made a pretty big difference. But unfortunately, in this case, it really didn't do much for us. And if you have the patch installed, then it doesn't really matter. However, I do have to say though that 24H2 does feel snappier, but that's kind of subjective and clearly it doesn't seem to translate into more gaming performance. But Microsoft has done a lot of UI improvements and I've covered those in previous videos. However, when build updates come out and they often come out with stability issues, it might not be the best case to jump on them right away. So is this the case if you're really only concerned with gaming performance? Then I don't think you should be in a rush to upgrade to 24H2. Now, with that said, the nice thing is, is it doesn't hurt gaming performance either. So, if you do want to take advantage of some of the new features that come in 24H2, then it doesn't seem like you'll have to sacrifice much gaming performance, if any. And with that said, if you'd like to see some of the features that are new in 24H2, then check out this video here. I did this video while 24H2 was still in beta, but it's definitely still relevant today. And as always, you guys have a great day.